Hello everybody, today is a perfume video and we are going to be discussing this particular selection of fragrances that are new to my personal perfume use. This is a very bizarre video because I'm not sure what happened. Um, every three to four months I maybe film a video showing what I have, what's new, why I bought it, what I think of it so far, and oftentimes I'll show you stuff that I haven't formed a complete opinion about. Um, this time around there are five new purchases in the last few months and I am absolutely just in in complete confusion as to why I bought what I bought. I don't know. It's been a weird month, last month. Um, mostly because we have some relatives in Ukraine. I'm not sure my purchasing habits are bizarre right now. Um, and I'm not I'm not even shopping much. I don't know what happened. Anyway, uh, here here is the record of what happened with my perfume purchases. It's 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 odd to me even. I don't know how to explain it. Stress maybe. I don't know. So the first thing that I bought was a, maybe two and a half months ago, and this was not a, a, an impulse purchase. This is something that I don't regret and I actually quite like. I thought through this purchase. This is how I normally buy perfumes. This is before, before whatever's happening started happening. Um, this is Mont Guerlain from Guerlain. If you watch my channel, you know that I have a lot of flankers from Mont Guerlain. I do like the base fragrance and I do like how they've developed the line so far. They've had quite a few bangers, in my opinion. And uh, Mont Guerlain Eau de Parfum Floral is the floral, springy um, version of the Mont Guerlain. Um, I do like Mont Guerlain quite a bit, but I do find it a little heavy and a little too gourmand at times, and definitely for the warmer weather or for spring, I want something a little bit more uplifting, something a little bit more floral, something a little bit more natural and less edible. Um, this is a 15 ml bottle. This is sort of the standard of what I normally buy in the Mont Guerlain lineup. Uh, and this was the only the only size available where I was buying it. Uh, I like the bottle. The bottle is a standard bottle, but it does have rose gold trim uh, and hardware, which I appreciate. I think it's very pretty and, and uh, looks quite feminine. I do like the design of the bottle, although they do say they've been designing this bottle for like God knows how long. I don't think it's that special or interesting. But um, I do enjoy the fragrance quite a bit. It is, in fact, definitely more Mangalan. Meaning that if you close your eyes, you know the line, the Mangalan line, you close your eyes and you smell this perfume, you will immediately be able to identify it as part of the lineup for sure. It has the DNA, the Mangalan is definitely there. Now, again, what they are doing with the flankers are, are slight modifications to lean towards one demographic versus the other, one preference versus the other, one. Um, uh, one season versus the other. So they're they're operating within very, very strict Mongolian guidelines or, or um, borders. Uh, and all of the fragrances from the lineup are definitely the same kind of a fragrance, definitely within the same family and with the same base. Uh, the same cannot be said for other thing uh, for other brands, for example, Lancome, Idol. Oh, one of them doesn't have much to do with the other, doesn't have much to do with the third version. Um, in this case, you're actually getting Mont Guerlain, without a doubt. So the DNA of Mont Guerlain is there, but it is lifted up a little bit. Uh, the base is a little less dense and the middle and top notes are very floral. I will do a separate um, review on the fragrance, but in general, it is just a very floral um iteration of Mont Guerlain as promised. So it's exactly how they're selling it to you, exactly what the name says. Uh, the Parfum Floral. It's a floral version of Mont Guerlain. Um, so if you do like more floral uplifting uh, fragrances for the spring, I think you will like this uh, if you're a fan of the lineup. So basically, good choice, I think. Um, and exactly what I was expecting with the name, right? So I was expecting Mangalan, but more floral. This is exactly what they provide. I appreciate it. It's consistency. It's uh, knowledge of your customer base. I think good choice not to make it too different or too weird or too heavily skewed. Very wearable floral gourmand fragrance. I appreciate it. I like it. I'm glad I have it. That was a thought through choice that I was contemplating for a while. So no qualms about that one. The rest of the choices though, that I've made this uh, this past little while are kind of 
kind of weird. First and foremost, I've sold my pink sugar, um, aqualina pink sugar that I had, the like the classic pink one, um, the OG, so to say. I've bought it twice, and twice, uh, one time I used it up, and one time I sold it. Now, uh, this time around, I, for, for one reason or another, decided to buy yet another bottle of it, unknown reasons, but I'm actually not mad at myself for this purchase. This is very, uh, very Aqualino pink sugar. So definitely the pink sugar DNA is there as well. It's undoubtedly from that lineup, the DNA is the same. It does have more floral notes and it's quite, um, also has a, a, a pretty noticeable tropical flair like tiare flower maybe uh, it's it's very tropical it's very sweet very edible but also there's some florals so more wearable in my opinion because i don't find pink sugar all that wearable but it is one of my husband's favorites because of course if something smells like a sweet you can eat he's going to find it attractive so the pink sugar this one is the in this case, it's Creamy Sunshine. Creamy Sunshine is this amalgamation of a more tropical, basically, twist on Aqualina. Pink sugar with some floral notes. I do find that it's quite, actually quite attractive and more attractive than the original. So if you like the original but you find it too foody, then you might want to test the Creamy Sunshine out. But this is still extremely foody. So I don't want to mislead you into thinking this is a floral fragrance. It is not. Um, it is very gourmand with floral overtones let's say uh, and uh, quite a tropical vacation like flair. I do like it in terms of using it as a layering fragrance or as a nighttime fragrance. I think I'm going to keep it uh, and I'm pretty certain I'm going to keep it longer term. I have used it as you can see I've definitely dented it. I've used it some. I think it's a it's a wearable version for sure. More wearable than the original in my opinion um, and if you love Aqualina Pink Sugar and you collect them this is this is definitely a contender for your wallet. I think not a bad purchase, although, you know, it is Aqualina Pink Sugar. It's kind of cheap smelling and, and very, very sweet. However, for layering, these very sweet gourmands actually work quite well because they mix with others and layer with others relatively well normally because there's no competition in the notes. Um, so, for instance, florals layer quite well over these kinds of scents, and I have found that to be true as well. I also have layered it with my Chanel Number no. 5, and I quite enjoyed the result. If you're curious, you can try that combination and see if you like it too. The other three fragrances are even more bizarre. For example, uh, Diesel Plus Plus Femme is a fragrance from the 90s that I have not even thought about for about. <laughs> 20 years. I don't know what's going on, um, but I once I smelt it, it was an, on a clear out because it was, um, it's discontinued. I don't think you can get it very easily. Um, and uh, I just, uh, something clicked in me and I wanted to smell it. And then I couldn't walk away without a bottle, apparently. This is a very weird amal amalgamation. Um, I think uh, Zaldig and Voltaire could totally have released this kind of a fragrance these days. It's a bit of a niche type of a fragrance. It's a bit bizarre. There is an element of burnt rubber in it, um, along with creaminess of almost like coffee cream. Um, slight sweetness as well. It's kind of a, 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 a bizarre slash cool slash gross perfume. I'm not sure how to describe it even. It's so, so odd. I think uh, a lot of people wore it in the 90s, and I have so many memories connected to this scent. I personally never owned it before, uh, but people around me wore it a lot, and it was the cool thing to, to wear. It was um, a very popular scent. So I have a lot of scent memories connected with it, um, but it is quite a bizarre um, quite a bizarre fragrance. I think more experimental brands uh, today could have totally come up with that and it would have been a banger for them. Uh, but this is the, this lacks mass appeal in my opinion right now because there is this burnt rubber sort of feeling about it which also is present in a fragrance like um, Bulgari Black if you know that one. That one is also like very cool motorcycle jacket. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm riding a motorcycle with the basket of vanilla and I'm burning my, my, my tires a little bit. So it's the same kind of scent. It's kind of a steampunk, soft steampunk sort of vibe. I don't know how to explain it any better, but in my opinion, that's kind of where my 
mind goes in terms of styling. Like if I was to translate this scent into a visual, it would be uh, it would be kind of steampunk apocalypse sort of situation. So very interesting. It's a super interesting scent. I'm not sure if I like wearing it on me, but I like smelling it. It's a very, very interesting scent. This sort of creamy, milky, plastic, uh, rubber uh, sort of feel. And I think extremely, extremely unisex. Uh, it's called feminine. I do not believe this is all that feminine. I think this is a pretty unisex vibe. Just like Bulgari Black is unisex, it's unisex in the same exact way. So I don't know what to say about this. I'm not sure why I bought it for nostalgic reasons. Apparently, I'm not sure if I'm going to wear it. I've worn it a couple of times and I kind of liked it. I don't really have a good explanation for diesel uh, plus plus. And then another weird purchase. I don't really buy from Kasha Hal very, very much and definitely not from a more more line. I bought two, two fragrances from, from uh, the line of the flankers. Thankfully, I didn't buy the original. I know what it smells like. I've had it. I don't actually wear it or, or I didn't like wearing it very much when I had it. But I bought two flankers and I think because I was in a place where I was looking for something really fun and uplifting because I wanted to counteract some of the stress I was, I was having at the time and still am having. Um, but the two fragrances are do have a sort of a Coca-Cola um, smell to it, one of the notes, one of the top notes, and I do agree. I definitely can smell it. So very frivolous, uh, teeny bopper sort of fragrances. Do you have those? One of them is a love festival. I've used it quite a bit. I'm trying to figure out how I feel about them, but my, my feelings in general have been so random and uh, just chaotic lately. I don't know what I feel about these either. So yes, they're fruity. This is um, Le Flamenco flanker and the uh, love festival flanker. So those two flankers, I'm, I don't know. I don't really love them but they're very easy to wear. So it's just like a body spray sort of situation. If you have fruity body sprays, that's kind of how it is. They're not necessarily your favorite thing to wear, but they're easy to wear, so you wear them. That's how I feel about these two. I'm not even sure if I'm gonna keep them or not. I don't know because I don't have very strong feelings about either of them. I don't know what I wanna do with them, but I'm going to try and wear them a little longer to get a really good sense of what I'm what I'm gonna do with them. Um, but they're, they're just fruity body spray sort of situation with a bit more longevity. That's all there. they are. Um, maybe for a younger audience, maybe for a young teenager, that would be um, something that I would recommend. But Otherwise, I don't find them particularly interesting. The Coca-Cola thing is kind of cool. Um, but outside of that, eh, they're just a, a very fruity body spray type of scent. So the confusion that is my purchasing for these past couple months, especially for the last month, um, the Guerlain is obviously a hit. Surprisingly, Pink Sugar is seems to be a decent layering scent. I'm going to play with it more and make more combinations happen and then decide whether I'm going to keep it or not. Diesel++ Plus Plus is a weird, nostalgic uh, jerk. Not, it's not a jerk. I'm jerking towards purchasing it for reasons that aren't because I love wearing it. And with the Cacharel, I don't even know what happened. It's a mystery to me still. I'm trying to decode it and see what the hell happened in my brain. Uh, so tell me how you are doing with your fragrances. Did you buy anything interesting in the last few months? Um, do you have those weird months when you just make weird purchases? <laughs> or am I alone here? Um, have you tried any of the ones that I have? Uh, what did you think of them? If so, do you have any memories connected to the Diesel++? Plus Plus? If so, share them down below. Um, and also, um, in terms of a more and more a line, those two, have you tried those? What did you think of them if you have? Um, I mean, I'm just curious to know. So that's it for today. See you guys later. Have a wonderful day and stay well, stay safe, stay healthy. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.